Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Waldoc Way. You've probably already figured out that this is a day in the life video. I'm so excited to have you join us to see what a day in our life looks like. You've already seen us have a very, very slow start to our day, and that is actually one of our favorite parts of homeschooling is that it gives us the ability to do that. It gives us the ability to have a super slow start and start later in the day because we're night out. So it is noon, it's 12, and we are just now getting kind of ready to actually start our day. And that's okay, and that's one of the things we love. Our days, because of that, tend to have a routine or a flow to them, and so it kind of looks very similar every day, and that's we get up, we have our slow start, and then when we're ready, we do a morning time, a table time with structured lessons, some kind of learning lunch, whether that's all together, or Emily having educational screen time while we take a break if we need it, um, and then some sort of afternoon activity or lesson, but more fun, so like project type stuff, and then, you know, our regular like dinner, family time together, that kind of thing. And we both work from home, Kevin and I both, so we tag team a lot of things. You're gonna see him do things with her while I work and me do things with Emily while he works and it's just kind of the way our life works. We are homeschooling and learning and working, doing all of the things from home, basically from the time we start our day until the time we end our day. It is July 16, 1969. By 9 a.m., the temperature hits a whopping 90 degrees. That's just a typical summer morning in Central Florida. The heat does not stop a crowd of a million people from coming as close to Cape Kennedy as they can get. That's where the United States will launch a spacecraft in just a little while. Carloads of people line the roads for miles. Hundreds of boats bob in the waters just offshore. The beaches swarm with people. Everyone hopes to get a glimpse of the Apollo 11 spacecraft as it soars off into the heavens. 2,000 reporters are in the press area, ready to write headline stories for their newspaper. It's July 16, 1969. After years of work, tests, terrible failures, and wild successes, Apollo 11 is about to begin its journey to the moon. You're part of the mission control team that will work to get astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin, or Buzz, Aldrin Jr., and Michael Collins there. The mission control parking lot is full, even this early in the morning. Everyone is here for the launch. Later, some people will go home while others stay. The whole moon trip will take about eight days, so everyone will work in shifts. The rocket's engines roar to life at 9.32 a.m. Enormous bursts of flames spread across the launch pad. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off! The giant rocket lifts into the sky and soon the astronauts are barreling towards the moon at more than 24,000 miles per hour. Everyone in mission control has a job to do. You can help the team that will land the astronauts on the moon, or you can work with the team that will launch the lunar module from the moon for the first phase of the return trip home. Uh, the first one. To work with the team, the landing team? Yes. Okay. Well, we will read the rest of that tomorrow. So we'll find out what the landing team does then. I will land the spacecraft. Yep, probably, probably That's right. That's what it sounds like. Landing team, landing spacecrafts. What was astronomy for? In ancient times, astronomy was vital for everyday life. The movements of the sun, moon, stars, and planets were used to measure time and the seasons. Sailors and nomads, tribes of people who moved around a lot, used the stars to find their way. Long ago, most people believed that everything that happened in the skies was caused by the gods. Some thought that the planets and stars were gods. So stargazers looked for signs to tell them when to do important things, such as crowning a new king. Yes. Today's space job is a flight controller. I work in a mission control center on Earth. My job is to keep astronauts safe on the space station and deal with any problems. I work as part of a team of flight controllers and we do a variety of important jobs. From looking after the space station's power to monitoring its air system so the astronauts have air to breathe. It's an amazing career. I studied engineering in college, then did lots of training exercises at the space agency to qualify as a flight controller. Ta-da! All right, I want you to continue to work on capitalization and punctuation. Mm -hmm. So I pulled a few things and you can pick which one you wanna do first. This is hot dots and I put a tab. You have one punctuation and one capital letter. So you can do those two. And then this is rising star capitalization and punctuation. It's a file folder game. So which do you want to do first? Your hot dots or the file folder game? 
Hot dog. Okay. Is first. How should the missing sentence be written? Jen asked blank. Jerry said ones with lots of frosting. What kind of cake do snowmans like? Hmm. This one looks right. What kind of cake do snowmen like? And it's got a question mark. Okay. <laughs> now, do you know why it's wrong? Jen asked. When somebody asks, it means they're saying something, right? Oh, I know what it should have been. It should have been this. Mm -hmm. You just didn't look far enough down. Your oh. quotation marks, right? So, because she asked it, you needed the question marks as a question. And then the... And you needed the quotation marks because she said it. Yep. So, let's see if that one's right. There you go. Why did the shoelaces have to stay after school? Asked Layla. Layla. Because it was naughty blank, exclaimed Chang. So now which punctuation mark? Because it was naughty? Hmm. They gave you a key in the word that they used. Well, normally when I say a joke, I normally, like, kind of exclaim it. And is that not the word that they used? Did they not use that word? What does it say? Because it was naughty. Exclaimed. Yeah, so, see? yep, an exclamation yeah. mark. So, see, they gave you the, they kind of gave you the answer there. That's why it's important to look all the way around, right? Mila reads. That says Mia. Mia read about Pluto in a book called News for Kids. The book said that Pluto wasn't a planet anymore. Why? What is it now? It's a dwarf planet, which mm. I think is kind of weird. It is weird, but keep going. Okay, news for kids, news for kids, news for kids. Wait, no, this one, news for kids. Okay. Hmm. But your kids be capitalized. Is that part of the title? Yeah. But so is four. Mm, but what do we know about articles? Oh, right. The f like, things like that don't need mm -hmm. to be capitalized. So, news for kids. Remember, yeah. articles like is, the, for, they don't have to be, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your answer is incorrect, said Mr. Begoodle. Is that it? Uh, yeah, who knows? We'll go with that. The science, the science teacher. But is very creative. So what would be the right way to write his name? Mr. B. Goodle, Mr. B. Goodle, Mr. B. Goodle. I'll leave as it is. No, that's wrong. Mr. B. Goodle. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's B. Okay, so try let's see. Wow! Yeah, I got it right! So this is a file folder game. Now, in the future, you'll be able to do this by yourself. You won't need me at all. But this is the first time we've done one of these, so I'm going to do it kind of with you or be here in case you have questions. All right? So you will need the things it shows you down here. I will probably have laid them out, but in case I haven't, you need the storage pouch. Which, which we is, have. Yep, and it has all of the stuff in it because I already put all the things in all the pouches. And then we have the folder. Yep. And then your directions for how to play or whatever to do will be right up here. Go so ahead. you're going to place the game cards question side up on the mat to create a draw pile. Place the pawn tile on the green arrow at the start of the game path. Select the top game card, read it, and answer the question. Turn the card over to check your answer. If you answered correctly, move the pawn tile the number of spaces indicated on the card. So when you flip it over, I'll tell you how many to move. Then place it in the discard. Keep going until you've answered enough questions correctly to reach the stage at the end of the game path. Okay? okay. So we'll open this up. Let me open this up. And this is our that's, ending point. Yep, that's your stage. So she, right here is where she's going to start auditioning. All right, and then here's your question. So we put those in the draw. 
okay? And then this will be your discard. So like I said, this is a game that you'll do by yourself, but I'll be here in case you have questions this time. Okie dokie. Choose the correct sentence. My favorite song, I Cry For You, soar to the top of the charts. I think it's A because there are punctuations because she's saying it, but these ones don't have the little quotation marks that you need. Okay. So you think it's A instead of B, so flip it over and see if you're correct. You see right here it says the answer a, is... A, and I get to move one space. Okay, so put it in the discard, and then you move like your... Like this? Yep. No, no, you can put it this way. Oh, okay. And then move your, move your person one space. Oh, look, she's already getting ahead of line. Yay! Bobby Glow Jar sang his new song, The Beat of Streets. This is better. It has both of the special little quotation marks. Let's see, so that means B. I was correct. Move two spaces this time. Yes, so I don't have to lose my turn. Boop. A favorite album is I'm Forever Alvin by Rock Rock City. Hmm, I think it's B. It's B. I get to move two spaces. One, two. For math today, we're going to play Ads Monday. And so I'm going to review the gameplay just so we remember how to play it. Okay, so each player chooses their own difficulty level for the game. So there's different difficulty levels. See how there's like the one star and then the two star. Um, and there's some, I think, in here that are even three star. So we choose our difficulty level for the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's easy, medium, and hard. And then monstrously hard. And we don't have to play the same level, so I'll play a harder level than you. At the same time, all the players focus on their top card and the number in the center using the five other numbers on here. 12 minus 4 is 8, minus 2 is 6. Okay. okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, no, that wouldn't make it. Hmm. I know. 4 plus 12 equals 16. Good job. Six plus two equals eight. Good job. Three plus seven equals ten, plus five equals fifteen. Mm -hmm. Or what's three times five? Isn't five is eight. Three times five? Oh, three times five is fifteen. Exactly. So there you go. Three times five is fifteen. So there are two ways. Mm hmm. Hmm. Twenty plus eight is twenty-eight. Minus ten is eighteen. Yikes! That's a lot of math. Twenty divided by ten equals two. Very good. Because I know that tw ten times two equals twenty. You have something to say? As Monday. <laughs> Very good. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun in our solar system. It's the second largest planet, second only to Jupiter. Saturn is nine times bigger than our planet Earth and made up of mostly hydrogen and helium. Saturn is the only planet in the solar system with an average density less than water. If you could put Saturn in a giant pool, it's so light that it would actually float. Saturn's north pole has a six-sided jet stream spanning 20,000 miles with 200 mile per hour winds. The gigantic rotating hexagonal storm at Saturn's pole is unique, and there is nothing else like it in our entire solar system. Saturn is truly a unique planet within our galaxy. 
Number of moons, 82. Eight and two. So for lunch, we are going to head to Indonesia. Yay! All right, let's see what we're going to be eating in Indonesia. With over 6,000 inhabited islands plus over 10,000 uninhabited ones, each with their own local culture, it's safe to say Indonesia is very, very diverse. It's also safe to say we've got a lot of delicious fun to explore in this month's box. Sweet corn tortilla chips. Taste how Indonesia does There's grilled yellow, sweet corn. There's a yellow cutie cow. Oh, try that one. My, my, wait, I think they're flavored with like fruit. Different flavors. This one tastes like lemon. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay, so next up we're gonna try sweet grilled corn tortilla chips. I'm keeping these because they're good. These are my favorite. Mmm. You can give me that bag. Mm. Hand them oh, over. Does like really mm -mm. Hand them over. <laughs> okay, that's just weird. It's cheesy crackers with coconuts with cocoa sprinkles. This is Indonesia's favorite far out flavor combo. Cheese mm. and chocolate on a cracker. I'm not sure how I'm going to like this. Cookie. Yep, in the late 1500s, the Dutch established Indonesian colonies in search of natural resources, bringing them, bringing with them chocolate and cheese. Locals got creative with the new culinary arrivals. Ooh, yummy. And then this, oh, this looks so combo good. took off and continued to expand and explode in popularity mm. after Indonesia declared independence from the Netherlands in 1945. I enjoy this one. Today, it's a sweet and salty tradition. Mine. It's a cheese cocoa cookie. Mine. The is your mine. I mean, it's... Oh, it's so good. It's pretty. I'm not a big fan of cheese either. I love it. Please tell me you don't love it. That's I, really good. I want the second one. That's really good. Mmm. I think of it as a pop tart. I think of it as pop tart. That's not. There's nothing weird. That is crazy because I am not a fan of cheese. Cheese and chocolate sounds disgusting, but that is really good ah. actually. Mm. Spicy and sweet noodles in a chip. If there's one dish that's found everywhere, from high-end restaurants, one of the most iconic stir-fried noodle dishes in Indonesia. While the dish may have originated from Chinese immigrants. Local have, locals have made it their own by adding fried shallots, chili paste, and sweet soy sauce for a taste that's quintessentially Indonesian. It was only a matter of time before Indofood, the country's most famous potato chip brand, created a flavored chip so crunchy and savory, you'll be saying, thank you, Indofood. So that is our last one. This is going to be interesting because I actually like ramen. No, ramen, like the noodles, like, noodle. I don't, you, we've never been poor enough that you had to eat ramen. <laughs> yeah, when I was driving over the road, ramen noodles was a go-to. When I was in the Air Force, ramen noodles was a go-to. When me and Aunt Sammy first moved out on our own and it was ramen just us. Was yeah, because you basically have a cup of noodles and you just put hot water in it and ta-da, it's a, a meal. meal. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very inexpensive. Oh, that is kind of spicy. That's a ramen noodle. I, I, I can't eat it. Go ahead. Take a sip of drink and then eat one of your gummies. Woo! Yeah, did you say spicy? I don't remember you saying spicy. It says swi spicy and sweet. But that's more spicy than sweet. Yeah. 
the one that had the pepper on it was not at all. And I don't see anything. Woo! Anything. What about a pepper on that one? Oh, they're that, good, but I'm going to eat a peach train. <laughs> that's got some heat. Woo! It's not helping. I'm going to try to sit it on my tongue. I need oh, to man. Oh, that is good. <laughs> It, it tastes good, but it's spicy. It was delicious, but it burned my tongue. <laughs> Emily, can you find Indonesia on the map? It's right here. All the green area right here. Good job. That is Indonesia. We're going to do a uh, new box that just came in. It is uh, refers to as Blast Off. So what do you think it's going to be about? Probably about shuttles and rockets. That's along goes along with everything we're doing right now, isn't it? All right, so we're going to start off with experiment number one, and it's to kind of get your mind going in the direction that we want to end up with, which is about rockets and going to outer space. And this one's going to be a teabag experiment. Whoa! Fly, 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 fly! So we've done the tea bag experiment where we cleaned it out, we lit it on fire, mm -hmm. and it did what? It flew, like up into the air. Okay. Why do you think it floated into the air like that? Because, let's take an example by the hot air balloon. There's fire in the hot air balloon to make it go up. And what is the fire doing to make the hot air balloon go up? Do you understand that or do you know it? Not really? No. Okay. What the fire in the tea bag, much like the fire in the balloon's doing, it's heating up the air inside of the bag of the balloon or in the tea bag. Even though it looks like there's no tea bag left by the time it floats, it had built up enough heat in that bagging of the tea bag that it created a temperature difference. And it expands, heat expands, right? Makes things expand. Okay, well, it increases the space in the molecules so the air on the inside of the tea bag, much like a hot air balloon, is has expanded and is lighter than the air outside. The mm -hmm. air outside is pushing in, so basically what it does is it gets lighter than air and, and then it floats it rises up. up. That's right. One for bats. Yikes. One bat is all I got. Five for oh. cauldron. Oh, they look like bathtubs to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really big cauldron. Yeah, if the witches are going to eat you. You got one. I got two. Oh, three. If the witches are going to eat you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, think about it. It's like the cauldron from Hocus Pocus. I know, right? There's two. I know. Am I supposed to be counting? Three. She's not counting. Four. There's one. I need the That's gold one. Five. 
One, two, three, four, five. All right, five for me. Okay, please be cats. Four for cauldrons? Yay. Okay. One. There's one cauldron. Oh, man. Oh, that's a witch's hat. Go snoop. There's another one. Two. What's that? Oh, that's a cat. Okay. Count. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Four plus five is not okay. Nineteen points. Very good. Awesome! Yeah! <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, one for pumpkin. Oh. I'm not sitting, sitting in my normal spot. Is what it all is. I see one pumpkin. I got one pumpkin. I think. Yeah, just one. Pumpkin. But I've seen a lot of witches hats all of a sudden. Alright, I get two, two pumpkins. pumpkins. I get to roll twice for pumpkins, so. One. And two. Ooh. And gold, I think. No, that's a ghost. So, that's only so, eight. So, wait. So, that's eight. Mm-hmm. Your turn. So, four for witches hats. I think I had that last time. Ooh, I think the witch's hats are behaving me now. Beha they're behaving her. <laughs> That's not even a sentence. Well, I just made one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Emily's. Wait, that's two? Yes. In Emily's, the language I speak. Three. That's your last one. No, that was your last one, wasn't it? No, that was my three. Third one. Four. I'm pretty no. sure that was her, her no, fourth. No, I got four. And okay, I but I'm pretty sure that was your last one. I'm counting okay. next time. <laughs> and plus, I didn't get any t the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still and counting this, next time. This was... no, we know what that was. One, two, three, four. So four plus five is nine. Okay, that's 19 again. How did she get that again? Mm. One for goose. I got a gold ghost and a black ghost, so that's 11. Alan, Alan, I shot the beauty gun. Yo lost, yo lost, yo applesauce. Hog in a wood. Big black hog in a wood on a truffle hunt. Head stuck deep in the earth, grunt, snort, grunt. Oh, a hog's in heaven when his tongue is wrapped around a truffle. His tail uncurls and his hog heart performs a soft shoe shuffle. Big black hog in a wood, chewing muddy truffles. Great snout nosing them out. Sniff, snuff, snuffles. <laughs> That's a cute one. Mm. Nailed it. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. Fingernails. They're good for scratching an itch and scraping off sticky price tags. But there's more to those nails than you might think. The part you see is called the nail plate. It's mostly made up of dead cells. The pink color you see comes from all the blood vessels underneath your nail. <clears throat> your nail grows out of the nail root, which is under your skin. See that white half moon shape at the base of your thumbnail? Do you see it? That little small shape? Mm hmm That's called the lunula, and it's the end of the nail root. Your nail grows as new cells push the older cells towards the end of your finger. Kenji went back to his oil painting. It was five minutes to one in the morning. He had five or six hours left before dawn. He had the three things he had the three things necessary in order to become a great artist. One, he loved his work. Two, he had natural talent. Three, he practiced many hours a day. Do you want to become a great piano player? Love it, have talent, and work hard. Do you want to become a great teacher? Love it, have talent, and work hard. You mustn't belittle yourself, Rhonda said. I dare say very few people could have done what you did the second time through, retracing your steps so exactly you made it over a hundred turns. I doubt I could have done it, Rainey remarked. I know I couldn't have, said Kate through a mouthful of grapes. Sticky ducked his head. Besides, you aren't the only child ever to have trouble with the maze, said Rhonda. When I first went through it, I got terribly lost. You got lost in the maze, Sticky said. The other's ears perked up. Oh, yes, several years ago when I took the same test, 
I thought I was very clever, but I knew right away that I was in a maze of identical rooms. I've been able to sense such things. Well, I thought to myself, if every room has three exits, and I always take the exit to the right, then I'll make my way around the house to the back in no time, of course. Mr. Benedict had thought of that. And that's a wrap for this day in the life. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us and seeing a little bit inside our homeschool and life, kind of what it looks like in a day. Today was pretty typical. It is a Monday and we do tend to start our weeks out really strong and by Friday we are dragging. So it is kind of a more, I guess, heavy handed day. Also social media was down today, Instagram and Facebook crashed and we're down all day. So that gave me a little bit more time because I wasn't on it at all. Um, so I had time to do a few other things that I might not have been able to do or participate in because I would have you know, been on social media, answering messages, posting, etc. We are pretty much done with the day. Emily is in bed. She might listen to an audiobook for the next 30 minutes and then go to sleep. Kevin and I will still work for another one to two hours. I will spend the next one to two hours editing this video because you guys will actually be seeing it live tomorrow. So I'm going to change into my pajamas, grab my laptop, get in bed, watch a Netflix show while I edit. And Kevin will probably go back downstairs and do a little bit more drawing. He tends to like to do that to unwind before bed. But that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this day in the life and you would like to see more days in the life, let me know in the comments down below.